beautiful colour. Thank you. So do we know what's wrong with it? It's just um, I think it probably got knocked. It's certainly all right now. He's mm. he's got a full belly, he's pretty good. Um but we'll keep him here and then oh, we sweetie. the council have just let us start to build a wildlife um, area at the back of our garden That's on right. our allotment and right next to it so lots of trees and, sh and uh, leaves so we could let him go there and then he's only got to fly across the road and he's in the woods wow. mm. so but i'll put him up in our unit up in you're going to put him where the other one was yeah. outside because you've still yeah. got all the gorgeous isn't it beautiful Lovely. beautiful <laughs> Hello Pat, thanks for agreeing to talk to us today. Now we're here at your home where you run the Willow Wildlife Rescue Centre and uh, I believe you run it with your husband. Can you tell us a bit about how um, you actually got involved? Um, we're one of those families that people have always brought things to. We lived in a flat in Woolwich when we first got married and the children were little and Every day you'd open the door and someone had left a cardboard box outside with, with a bird or something in it. So I don't know why there are just people around that people automatically think, oh, I'll take it to them. I don't know why. But when Eddie um, took early retirement, he was hit by a truck and um, they made him, to gave him redundancy on health grounds, really. And that was about 22 years ago. And um, he was a house husband for two years, but he was absolutely useless. I was working full time and I'd come home in the evening and he'd decide to make wine or something. And it was total chaos everywhere and never anything out of the freezer for dinner. And then um, we had, there was a sick fox in the garden and we rang around trying to get someone that would help um, to look after it. And we got some advice from someone. Um, one of our daughters was in the Navy, she was at the Wrens for 10 years and she was based down in um, Portsmouth. Uh, she was working with the Royal Marines and she used to, she always used to bring people home for the weekend. There was always a, a house full of some really hunky blokes actually. Um, that She'd just turn up with them for the weekend mm -hmm. and she rang me and she said, is it alright if I bring two stokers home for the weekend? Well that's what the Navy call Marine Engineering Mechanics. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I suppose so. And I thought, well, why is she asking? She usually just turns up. But when she turned up, I got extra food in. And I'm looking and I said, well, where's the boys then? And she said, here. And she had a cardboard box and it were two baby hedgehogs. And they'd been found in the boiler room on the base. Right. And she called them stokers because they were in the boiler room. So that started us off on hedgehogs. And it just seemed to go on from there. Um, people rang us. If they, if they found things, that was on our home phone at the time. And after a few years, we decided we we got into um, complementary medicine, um, homeopathy in particular. I'd been recommended to take it when I was having a major operation, and I was so amazed with the effects that um, we decided that we could help animals in the same way, which other people laughed and called us the witch doctors, and, and generally not very nice. Um, but we stuck with the homeopathy for animals and it does have amazing results. Homeopathy and bulk flower remedies are the main things that we use, but we also use crystals as well. How many animals do you have on average? Um, I'd say on average in a year we, we deal with about 800, 800 or 900 animals. We also treat animals in the wild, um, mainly foxes with mange. We can uh, deliver homeopathic remedy to the people who've got them in their garden if they're prepared, and it sounds silly, but if they're prepared to make a jam sandwich and cut it into little squares and then you put the homeopathic remedy on the top of the bread mm -hmm. so that when the fox picks it up, that powdered tablet will start to work in their mouth. Because homeopathy works in the mouth, not in the stomach. So they don't have to eat it, they're just going to pick it up and carry it away. So when it came to choosing a name, everybody decided that Willow Wildlife Rescue would be a good idea. So that's how it started. Um, we weren't a registered charity until about four years ago, mainly because we never had enough money to um, require us to be registered, really. And we got the legacy, and that's what we've been operating on for the last three or four years. When that runs out, I don't know quite what we'll do, because um, raising money is difficult. Um, people don't have money, 
Fuel for the vehicle costs about £100 a week for diesel. Um, vets bills have skyrocketed. Um, bedding, bedding is, well, because of the weather I think is the excuse, but hay and straw and chippings and things have doubled. So I think hay is tripled in price for a bale of hay over the last few years. So, you know, it's getting more difficult to find the money to fund it on. Um, as I say, food's more expensive for the animals. Right. You're right, shush. And uh, so, as I say, after this money runs out, I don't know how much longer we'll be able to keep going for. Roughly, I would say it costs us about £25,000 a year yeah. to keep operational. And that's not accounting for electricity because all of the heat lamps and heat pads and lighting in the units at the end of the garden come from our domestic supply. This is, we call this jelly bean because the guy who builds it for us was an addict of jelly beans. <laughs> Chloe was a baby at the time and so what we call it the intensive care page right. um, where we can put animals in the drip. Um, we've got a pretty high tech bit of kit here that um, measures the uh, amount of fluid going through. You can set it digitally All right. to give so many um, mils or fractions of a mil per minute. Um, fan, in case it's too hot. Heat lamps in abundance. The thing is, because we don't rescue just one type of animal, we have to have cages and equipment it's a case of everything. Everywhere to cater for everything because yeah. we never know what's going to come in next. And when you're not using them, you've got to find somewhere to put them. So there tend to be cages and things stacked everywhere because the next thing that comes in, you might need to use it. Mm. So it, it it is more difficult treating a range of wildlife than it is, say, just sticking to one thing, yeah. like the Fox Project. Right, this is the, the latest one we've got. And I, to some extent, I, I've been able to design it as I want. So, um, first of all, this is a cupboard. This deals with all the, the problems I'm likely to come against. There's two ladders. You've got a light that um, fixes on either one of the electric sockets I've got in the corners of the vehicle. No, we bought all of this uh, donate, donating. We, we suddenly want it, so we go and buy it because the next day you might need it. So, yeah. by the time you've tried to grovel for money, you're not, you know, you could get on with it. So. Uh, that's that. This is the back. Internal lights are blue so that um, it doesn't frighten the actual animal. And um, if you need to get a vein, you can see it, it, it will go up quicker. So that's that side. Um, in here we have. Um, couple of bags one takes everything in that I would need for a swan and the other one is for, for deer and, and they are pillowcases with the corner cut off economy drive cut the corner off and that either goes over the head of a swan so his neck pulls through and you've got his wings covered or it goes over the nose of a uh, over the eyes over the nose of the deer sorry and, and and actually covers the deer's eyes because that is what stresses them when they look at you so um, this contains all the um, homeopathic remedies that we will need um, dealing with uh, head trauma spinal shock bleeding um, whatever I'm going to come across it goes the tablet will go in there it's the tablet is dissolved in a rescue remedy um, that would go in there and we suck it up with one of these and then if the animal's unconscious tilt the head and you squirt it in and it runs down because you don't want it to choke him so that sorts that out that's a fox box um, it's used for other animals as well but mainly fox um, we have two polystyrene boxes because winter's coming up and um, that will deal with small birds hedgehogs and it, it gets quite warm in there at the back the white is a badger cage the blue box is um, for small deer um, dogs um, it had a, a raccoon dog in there recently they're the animals that live in Iberia there was one locally running loose 
they're all bandages and we have burn bandages there um, we have lots of equipment that will actually treat animals we have the longest pole in the vehicle which runs from here to the, just behind the driver's seat uh, we have net, this net is constantly in use that's the one we mainly use that's a snatch bag so that I can put it on my back to travel um, and I should have everything I want next to that or behind that is a stretcher so we've got covered everything we've got oxygen should we need it and I've got another call okay <laughs> Hello, wildlife families. But Eddie is out quite often. As I say, this time of year is a time of year when we get a bit of a breathing space. Um, but we're still getting young birds in, which is unusual. But it's because of the weather. We've had summer, winter and spring all within sort of like a few months. And then it goes around and starts again this year. The animals are confused because they don't know what time of year it is and they're still having young because they think it's springtime again. Yeah. But then all of a sudden it's cold and they reckon we're gonna have snow and there could well be baby birds and young hedgehogs out there that, that won't survive because everything is so confused with the weather conditions. I mean, we might not like it, but it's not a matter of life and death to us, but it is to uh, you know some of the wildlife. Do you ever find yourself getting emotionally attached to the animals? Always. Um, uh, if you're not emotionally attached to some degree, I don't. Th I think you shouldn't be doing it, because if you don't actually care about the animals that you're treating, then you're not going to be doing it properly.